For this particular research project, we were interested in filling gaps in the HIV prevention field. What the field was doing was taking drugs used for HIV treatment and now giving them to healthy individuals to protect themselves from HIV infection. But what we didn't know is whether those drugs should be used in the same dosing strategy and with the same dosing regimen as in HIV treatment. To address this problem, we used a three-pronged approach. At the bench, we took cells and we exposed them to a wide range of concentrations of these particular drugs. And then we added virus to our cultures to see what concentrations would prevent HIV from infecting these cells. At the bedside, we enrolled 48 healthy volunteer women and gave them a range of doses of these drugs. And we measured the concentrations of these drugs and their active metabolites in vaginal tissue, cervical tissue, and rectal tissue in order to understand the relationship between the dose of drugs we were giving and the concentration at the site of early HIV infection. And then we did the math we used a computer model to take the information we had in the cell culture system at the bench and in patients at the bedside to predict what dosing strategies would be required to protect these particular tissues from HIV infection and thus men and women from HIV infection. What we found in this particular study was that even though men and women were prescribed the same dose and dosing regimen of these drugs, women needed to take every dose every day in order to protect themselves from HIV infection, whereas the dosing in men was much more forgiving. Men didn't need to take every dose every day. They could be protected if they took two or three doses a week. So there was a difference in the outcome between men and women. So I believe the results of our investigation really provide a paradigm shift for drug development in HIV prevention. By using the bench and bedside and computer simulation approach, we can better select drug doses and dosing strategies for volunteers moving forward without waiting until a study ends in futility or without waiting until we see no difference between placebo and drug when really a difference does exist. We think this is also important in the HIV prevention field to look at differences between men and women because dosing strategies in men may need to be different than dosing strategies in women. Overall, I think this type of an approach will lead to more efficiency and more efficacy in the prevention field.